Hello and welcome to the Coaching Conversation podcast. This is your host, Salah al and I am excited to have with me today uh, Katya Bakunina. Uh, Katya is a coach, uh, fellow coactive coach, and uh, also a professional certified coach, um, PCC. And um, we actually met uh, years ago when we were both going through the coactive uh, series. And uh, we've been in touch uh, on and off, uh, practicing coaching and trying to talk all things coaching. Um, and recently we caught up on some of the, you know, of our journeys and where we are. And I uh, invited her to uh, to uh, be on the podcast. So uh, I am really delighted to have you, Katya. Welcome. Thank you so much. And this, you know, I just have this giant smile on your face because <laughs> it's so wonderful to uh, sort of like, feels like we're closing a loop here somehow. Um, yeah. Very. So thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, it does feel like uh, sort of a, you know, at the end of like, you know, remember at the end of the each collective uh, class, it would be like there's sort of a completion <laughs> going on. Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, recently I was really, I was trying to um, learn more about your, where you are now. And and you you mentioned that you're, uh, you're going through your MCC uh, currently. Uh, well, congratulations on that! So thank you. Uh, that's a that's quite a, a huge achievement. So let's start a little bit. You know about like what got you into coaching? Like how mm-hmm. was you know how was your journey? Um, and and how did you end up deciding? Okay, um, this is something I want to do. Well, those are two very separate questions. What actually got me to decide? is a coaching conversation I had with a coactive coach before I even knew what coaching was or what coactive was. And uh, my big question was, what do I do now with my life? Because I exited my last business. And uh, prior to that business, I did many different things. If you look at my resume, nothing makes sense. I've had so many pivots. And uh, now looking back, I sometimes call myself a professional reinventor. You know, or a professional quitter, depending <laughs> on how you look at this situation, because I did quit quite a few, um, you know, different careers as uh, in, in TV production, in uh, in marketing. I was in uh, um, like different industries. And uh, so and at some point I found myself in this kind of like, well, now what? What do I do? And I had no idea. And I did not even know how to approach this conversation because previously an opportunity would be just in front of me and I would say yes and I would just jump in and I would you know learn on my feet basically you know and there you go I'm in a new profession I'm in a new career I have a new job Uh, I guess I was always lucky this way but this was the first time I found myself with no options I mean I had options and I I made a list of like 50 different things I wanted to do but how am I going to decide you know Mm because Just, just, just to give you an idea, some of the things that I had on there, I like, I wanted to grow, you know, wacky wildflowers. I didn't want to do a career like that, but for some reason, it was very appealing to me, right? Or uh, I lived in New York City at that time, and I was very just interested in the idea of green roots, and I wanted mm-hmm. to, you know, maybe go and. Um, like uh, become an engineer for you know, design, like uh, create, designing those uh, green roofs. Uh, so just, I had multiple ideas, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, how do how do we even approach that conversation? So, um, and uh, by the way, uh, becoming a therapist was also on the list. Um, I do have. Um, uh, I I finished. Uh, college with a degree in industrial and organizational psychology. So there was, so, and I remember how much I enjoyed um, experimental psychology and research psychology. I was like, okay, well, psychology is where I'm going to go. I, I knew that research, research and experimental is not going to be on my, on my list, but I was like, okay, so let's just uh, think about therapy. And I, um, I, uh, volunteered uh, as crisis counselor. That was my very first um, sort of like, well, let, let's let's try. And I I was surprised at how how much I liked it. It was very hard. It was emotionally very hard. I've never done anything like that, um, and I couldn't stop thinking about all the people. It's all anonymous. Like I I was talking to. I was like, what what is this? What is this? 
Um, and at that point, I started considering uh, uh, getting trained as a therapist seriously. Uh, but finally, someone said, just go talk to a coach. Like, coach, what is a coach? <laughs> go talk to a yeah. coach. So somehow I found somebody's name. I don't remember how. In 15 minutes or 20 minutes into our conversation, she asked me to imagine what it would be like um, to become a coach or be in some helping profession. And I imagined a path in the woods. Mm-hmm. And she asked me to get up and start walking. And it was on the phone. Back then it was mm-hmm. on the phone. And I started walking around my room. And then she said, what do you see around you? And I said, I see all those people and they're smiling. And she asked me, why are they smiling? And this is when I absolutely knew that this was the right path for me because I had this visceral experience of being happy because I was able somehow, um, I was able to help them. And I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And I remember I started pacing, you know, uh, around my room because I was like, all right, can we just like end this conversation? Because I know exactly what I want to do. I think that that day I signed up for Coactive uh, for the whole series and certification. I didn't even, you know, I was like, I'm I'm in, I'm in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great uh, experience. I I think that's the 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 visualization uh, definitely is is a big part of coaching, and uh, mm-hmm. it uh, it sounds like it it gave you you know a path forward with the what you want to do. Uh, but it, it it sounds like it was on your mind for quite some time. So you already have like a, a you did some brainstorming with the list of things that you want to do. <laughs> so. Um, so sort of that was it, that visualization gave you that yeah. you know, sort of the clarity yeah. you needed to uh-huh. um, go forward. Yeah. Uh, well, she was a great coach because she didn't ask me, you know, is is coaching the path you want to explore? Mm-hmm. She just asked mm-hmm. me, well, what options do you have? And I think I, I gave her like, well, 10 options on my list. And mm-hmm. then she asked me, well, which one do you want to like, which one are you most curious about? Mm-hmm. And I just, and and you know what? And I don't know, maybe if I said, green roof engineer maybe <laughs> there was another yeah. maybe, i don't know maybe i would have had a sim- similar experience if i walked yeah. that path but at that moment in time with that coach and the weirdest thing is that i don't even remember her name i remember yeah. it was a woman and i did not remember her name and i think about her so often she's like that you know you know like a symbol for me <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, this person. Yeah. yeah. I was just gonna like it was funny uh, when you say green, uh, you know, engineer for the uh, like you know it's that if somehow there is a there is sort of a, a connection there because like you're 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 saving you know uh, people some energy uh, or or cost of energy and, <laughs> and in coaching we do actually uh, help people with their energy as well. <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> that is true yes but we're creating uh, more sustainable future for people yes right? <laughs> good yeah. for the building good for the planet <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but yeah i think i think your your what your story or what you know the what you um you know how you came you know to this vision of being a coach uh i think a lot of people struggle with this like you know they have so many options nowadays and and it's hard to pick one and and take you know just commit to that path and and move forward so um so i'm curious what what made you realize that okay i'm gonna this is now that you you know got to this vision became you know have more clarity on the coaching path you know um how did you continue to commit to this sort of Mm. profession or, or or vision yeah, I think that's a that's a good question because as I was going through, uh, well, first of all, the, the training, and I'm I'm sure you remember it. It was nothing. Mm-hmm. No, I, I imagined that I would just sort of like, like I, I imagine traditional, <laughs> yeah, classroom. non-experiential, yeah. you know, uh, training where I'm just going to be sitting there and you know writing some notes and watching some slides. Uh, I had no idea what I walked into when I walked into the my first course. Um, and that experience of it, uh, was, um, it cracked me open. I, I think what kept, helped me, what, what kept committed, what, what helped me committed 
to stay the course was at some point I just realized that I'm doing this not because I am, uh, you know, learning new skills. Yes, that was sort of like a byproduct. I understood how important it was for me to go through this experience. It was the the experience of um, a growth, personal growth, just understanding myself, developing self-awareness, really for the first time, maybe articulating something about myself and that kind of like took my breath away and also hearing other people, my coaches that were coaching me in training, you know, say certain things back to me, reflect back to me what they were hearing. That was absolutely, um, it was just so amazing. I've never had any anything like that. So I think that kept me going, even though I was terrified. Yeah. <laughs> Every single course I was terrified going in. My imposter syndrome was all over the place. Um, and and I kept going. It was this kind of like this very bitter medicine that I knew I needed. I just, mm. and and I kept going. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. That's, um, you know, that was the, the, the setup or the environment or having this sort of, you know, uh, openness. Um, mm. I think, sort of help to um practice or or you know every with every course or or class there was sort of like a new level of awareness and improvement um and and then okay you know what else am i going to learn i've already feel like i've learned enough <laughs> and yeah. then you keep yeah. going <laughs> um so I know last time we spoke and and unfortunately we didn't record the the the, the conversation we had in the in the uh, last couple of weeks uh but we talk about this um idea of evolution of a coach like you know how as a coach you know you know continue to evolve and um you know sort of like continue to refine your craft and um so looking back now I, I think you're so so just to give people a little bit of um background here like you're at the mcc level now or at, you know you're going through that mcc so to get to that point you have to have like 2500 hours of coaching and a lot of other things and training to get to that point so um just reflecting back from where you started to where you are now how do you think you know you evolved as a coach I'm just noticing how, you know, just that question really took my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is, yeah, it, it is, it is humbling. Uh, I, of course, I feel a great sense of pride that uh, I think this, this profession and the work that I do means so much to me that I, right now, I, can't imagine myself doing anything else and this is this is very precious so to see now and then to have you know an organization like international coach federation that recognizes this commitment uh, you know um, and to know that i am i still need to record my sessions and um, you know um, work a little bit with my mentor coach but uh and also recognizing that well, that's not it. You know, that's not the end of the journey. That's not the end of the, you know, not at all. It, it almost feels like it's just the beginning of something even more profound for me. Um, and, and, you know, what I was I was thinking about that conversation that we had, the evolution. And I um, since then, I um, I had a chat with a friend of mine. He's a he's a, a, a adventurer and now outdoors writer and uh, and also an avid fisherman. And he was uh, he told me about the evolution of a fisherman. So at first, when you first learn how to fish, all you all you want is to catch a fish. Mm. The second stage is you want to catch a lot of fish. The third stage is you want to catch the biggest fish. <laughs> and at the fourth stage, you just want to fish. Mm. And wow. and I was thinking kind of like, like, what, what, what you know, does it make sense? Like, if we yeah. think about like the evolution of how like coaches develop in a way. Yeah. Yeah. It does sound very uh, sort of like back to the basics or or like the, the fundamentals of coaching um, or or just like you're you're you know using that metaphor or using that example of, of fishing um 
at the beginning, you just, you know, you're so excited. You just want to do a lot of, you, you know, you want to, you want to catch a fish. I mean, that's, that's yeah. the, the, you know, when you catch fish, you were really excited. And then uh, over time, you know, the excitement is, is, you know, become just becomes like you're, you just want to fish. You want to, you're enjoying the, the, the process or the fishing so much that it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're there. You want to fish and enjoy that experience. So similar, I think, to coaching, like, you know, in the beginning, you just want to, you know, <laughs> you want to uh, help someone with coaching or you practice your your skills yeah. and and find out, you know, how um, how you, the skills that you learn are going to help others, you know, in, in their journey. And then over time, you become just, you know, you, you just want to coach and, and help people, uh, as many people as you can. Um, to um get more clarity or or take you know action on yeah. on something that they've been putting off for for a long time <laughs> yeah um, yeah but I also like I, I see that 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 is sort of like the refinement in a way right because mm -hmm. as we like so first it's like I want a client <laughs> you know any yeah. client anyone anyone who's yeah, still breathing yeah. I want to coach them <laughs> yeah on anything um, and and then we're like we want to like fill our roster with like I want many clients you know just mm. kind of like the vision and and then it, it becomes like once you have experience with many different problems and challenges and you know context and clients you know and maybe you're like you start to refine like oh I'm actually really good in these particular situations with these particular clients or with these particular challenges or issues right and mm -hmm. you kind of like focus on that direction maybe start developing your niche and then you start thinking about like the, the big client right like something mm -hmm. that would just be like ah <laughs> yeah. yeah so I'm, i i think i'm in that i'm in that stage right now <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm thinking like what would like where is like my refinement right now is also about who do i serve uh the best best you yeah. know i do have pretty wide range of people I work with and I and I can be effective but um like what is my big fish uh, yeah. and I don't know yet this 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 uh, the answer to that question um <laughs> yeah. so um it's, there is a little bit of that enjoyment I I do enjoy it I do yeah. enjoy fishing still <laughs> yeah yeah I don't I don't fish but I I, I get the, the <laughs> I get the the connection because I think I mean I think I've, I used, I actually, the first time I, I, I uh, went to fish, I was like maybe 11, 12 years old. And then at the, at the time, I uh, obviously I wasn't very patient. <laughs> I just wanted to catch <laughs> something real quick. <laughs> so, uh, but, which actually, you know, thinking about this experience, you know, that's sort of like a beginner, um, you know, um, any, any beginner, you know, who's starting to do something new, they feel like they want to just they have this pressure to learn quickly and learning takes time right so uh so it's not like you know you're gonna you're gonna just you know throw the the you know the, the fishing rod into the lake or you know the 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 sea and then uh, you know you're gonna catch something right away it, it takes a lot of patience um uh, which again i mean that still applies to learning because you know every time i attended or finished uh, a coactive course i'm like what else is there to learn i mean this seems to be a lot of learning here and and even going in for the fundamentals i was reflecting on that uh in a short uh you know podcast i recorded about you remember the um the stages of learning you know where you start with yeah. like uh um unconscious, unconscious incompetence, incompetence yes <laughs> so you don't yeah. you don't really see that okay i already know this you know why do i need to uh take training and 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 learn more about this but uh and then you find that okay you uncover another level of awareness to see mm -hmm. that unconscious you know uh, conscious incompetence yeah. <laughs> you start to see like okay i see that you know i am lacking in a lot of areas that i need to uh, to learn and work on um that's a hard stage to be in yeah it is the hardest stage to be in, and so many. It's not hard to it's hard to accept. What so? What's hard yeah. about it for you? Like, what would you think is hard about this stage? 
Oh, I, I well, I was brought up in a culture that does not tolerate, you know, yeah. any type of incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was all about, you know, always knowing the answers, always, you know, it was all about the intellect and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I, I, and, and I, and I see, you know, every, every, well, every day, every, every, every client is, you know, in, in a way struggling with that too, you know, this, this idea that I got, I gotta know, I gotta, I have, I have to have it all perfectly figured out before, you know, I say something or before I ask a question or before I make a presentation or a proposal or, you know, anything, anything like that. Mm -hmm. or, uh, so it's just the, that that is the, the <laughs> to me personally it was it was hard because we were punished for not knowing <laughs> or you know yeah yeah confidence. i think yeah i think i mean we we sort of um came up with the term uncomfortable moments <laughs> in coaching mm. that was probably one of the uncomfortable moments because um thinking that you know something and then realizing that you don't really know. Um, and um, it, it's not easy to accept. Um, and, and and I think to me, that's sort of like the, the difference between continuing on the path of, of learning and refinement, as you um, mentioned uh, earlier, mm -hmm. uh, or just quitting and saying, okay, no, this is not really something I want to continue doing. Because yeah, every every time you discover that you don't know what you thought you knew, that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, I, I want to go back to what you said about quitting versus you know kind of like sticking sticking with it, uh, because I have such a history with quitting. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, we all, I mean, I'm sure I, I, I have, you know, similar experiences where, you know, there are some things that I just didn't want to stick with. So I, I don't know if I call that quitting or pivoting or, or just reinvention as you. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. Right, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm, I'm comfortable with both quitting and, and yeah. pivoting and, re and, re and reinvention. So with all three of them. Um, well, it, it's like, you know, like we have to ask this, ourselves this question. Uh, do, do I want to learn what's, what's next? You know, is this still giving me the, Mm, the chills the excitement mm -hmm. and uh, I I used to hold on to all of the you know books that I started reading but just like couldn't push through because just nah, I don't know courses that I paid for you know took a couple of those you know maybe first lectures or watched a couple of recordings and there's just something like it just it was it fell flat for me mm -hmm. and I used to hold on to those things for ages kind of like one day I'm gonna come back <laughs> one day I'm gonna push through this you know um and 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 that's the point I realized that well why don't I trust myself when I feel like something is flat and doesn't resonate and I have no interest. Why do I need to push myself through this? Um, you know, maybe that's just a signal for me that, oh, hey, it's possible I just made a mistake. I didn't do my due diligence. You know, mm -hmm. I fell for the sort of like 24 hours left. <laughs> yeah. You know, purchase now or you know, the early bird special. And, and yeah. this is the awareness now that I they're like carry with me how susceptible I, I am to those things. So now if there's something out there, you know, I love I love learning, but there's there's now a new opportunity. I really have to check with myself. Oh, do I want this? Am, is this the pressure of like, is this like the cool next thing? Or is this really something that I want that I would, you know, um, I would do no matter what? Mm. Uh, and it's, it's sometimes it's very uncomfortable for me to say like, yeah, I it, it's a no. Yeah. <laughs> there's a part of me that goes, no, it's a yeah. yes. We can do this. Let's do this. Let's go for it. But you love learning, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know there's a a, a guy. Um, a, yeah, I think he um, he has a, a TED talk about uh, how to start a movement. Um, 
which is basically just like you know starting to um it, it's it's very popular in, in ted um you know and and he talks about like uh, this idea of if it's not a hell yes it's a no <laughs> mm -hmm. so if you're not really mm -hmm. excited about doing it and you're you're like um okay this is something i really want to pursue then maybe it's it's a no um but then there is another aspect that you're you you made me think of is uh also as as you go there is this sort of signal we we tend to sort of feel it um somehow that okay this is not something i'm really excited about anymore or i want to pursue um but again i mean i i'm sure there are some sort of um i remember during the coactive um uh certification process there was um what um, you know, Karen Kimsey House, the one of the co-founders of CTI, uh, she talks about this dip. Like you know, at some point you just like feel like quitting. You want you don't want to continue this. <laughs> so um, so it's hard to it, it it seems hard to figure out. This is like you know, I could be getting signal that it's hard, and that's why I want to quit. Or is it it's hard, and I just don't want to do this uh because i am getting the signal that i'm i, I don't want to continue so how do you know the difference is there is there a way that to tell yeah um well i don't know if there's a way to tell but i would you know approach it to just really there is a need right well why why am i doing this thing why am i taking this course mm -hmm. why am i i don't know reading this book or why am i pursuing this hobby or passion or whatever it is that i'm doing and then we enter this messy middle where you know you're kind of like too far away from that initial fire that got you started you mm -hmm. are still far away from the end of it where you get this like or where you can't even taste the victory the end of your journey so you're in this sort of like this, this dark place of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe depleted already, you know, maybe discouraged, whatever it is. Mm. Um, so I think just also understanding that the need is still there. The, the need maybe maybe to learn or whatever brought me here, whatever, you know, it's it's still there. Now, did I choose the right strategy to pursue that need? Is this course, is this book, or is this journey the right type of strategy to help me satisfy the need? Sometimes the answer is no. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 also in a way, you know, there's like at the end of the at the end of my life, there won't be any sort of like you know police that's going to. <laughs> oh. You should have um, taken that you, course. <laughs> yes, yes. It's it's like you know. Well, we get to we get to make make it up our, ourselves um and i actually this was a, a big uh, i would say aha moment in my journey um both getting coached so many times and 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 working with so many clients is is how much freedom i actually get when i think about um whether i decide to pursue this or not i get to choose what story i want to create based on that because it is very possible that I'm going to continue pushing through and I'm going to make up the story that I am resilient. I can push through through difficulties, through challenges. You know, I know how to navigate the messy middle. I know how to, you know, follow through and get to the end of a very difficult journey. Or I might end it halfway and I get to empower myself with a different type of story. Like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I chose I don't know, freedom. I chose another option. I chose not to push through something that no longer resonates with me. Uh, mm. So, and and this for me is so much more important than whether I will actually complete a course or finish a book or, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's like, yeah. uh, what, what is this, what is, what could be the empowering story around that? That would really just kind of like, bing, you know? Yeah. Feel true. Does it like does yeah. does it make sense to you? Yeah, you... yeah, it does. Um, it's it's interesting because yeah, I I I'm gonna like one of the metaphors that I'm thinking about now is is this, and I've been thinking about this uh, for a while. Like the idea of when you when you start reading a book, for example, and you once you start the book, you know, you may just get you know after a uh, first chapter, a couple of chapters, you feel like okay, this is. I don't want to continue reading this book anymore. Um, do you feel obligated to continue the book because you started it? If 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 it's if it's 
if you're trying to finish the book because of guilt, then maybe that's not the the right path. So mm -hmm. um, because you're trying to, the goal is to learn. The goal is, you know, and, and find what, um, you know, you want to continue to work on. Um, um, in, in some ways, sometimes, the you know, um, you need to be persistent or give it a, a little bit of time. So just like me, when I was 11 years old and I, I wanted to just get a catch a fish right away, that, that doesn't happen. So so just give it a little bit of time before you decide that this is not something I want to continue before you want to before you said put the book aside and say i'm not going to read this book I, I am not interested yeah and you know and sometimes there are instances where you i don't know on some some kind of like intuitive level it's like you know that this is important and significant but somehow it's just not the right time right now mm -hmm. um and 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 it's that's also, you know, a possibility. And I, and I think for, with, with me, you know, um, that, that big dilemma, do I continue or do I, you know, do I end my journey? Um, I, cause I signed up for, uh, co-actives, um, you know, the leadership, uh, course, which is the 10 month course. And, uh, I completed two retreats and then the pandemic happened. So everything was put on hold and it was a very difficult uh, experience for me. Um, you know, a lot of my past sort of like trauma came out and like there was a lot for me to process emotionally. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, in a way, COVID gave me this necessary buffer to really think about, do I want to continue? Because there, there was an option, you know, just to, to end this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and do I still want to complete the other two? And it feels still very significant, uh, very meaningful, I know. But at that point, I which was not ready to continue because I knew it was probably, I was so hijacked that I was not learning what this beautiful program is meant to teach and open up in me. I was not available for that learning. So that was a, you know, a painful realization mm -hmm. that in, in, in a way, you know, I, I actually needed almost like two years to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, not, you know, some people don't have the two years to think about a decision, um, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I had that. And I'm lucky I had a, a way to integrate and work with whatever um, happened for me uh, back back then. Mm -hmm. So but that's also like patience with learning. Sometimes learning doesn't happen, you know, <laughs> on the day off. Right. right. It happens. Yeah. Sometimes it can just happen years after it just continues to work with with us. Yeah. Um, yeah and and that's that brings the point of of maybe um being intentional uh, mm -hmm. just learning with intention not just sort of you know haphazard learning or or accidental learning um so so you mentioned earlier that you connected you asked the question about the why why am i learning this why am i taking this class or course or pursuing this um career um and that kind of help you stay grounded that okay i'm doing this because of that's the vision i have um so um and you know i i just just wanted to like say here that with like my vision kept developing too mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i kept changing i was not the same person that said was it six seven years ago in that fundamentals class mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. in a way i needed to like I kept finding new, new, like newer things. My vision kept evolving from like, hey, I'm just pivoting and finding something new and exciting to, ooh, this is this is depth. This is interesting. This is challenging me in a very new way to, oh my goodness, I'm finding a new way to be with myself that gives me a little bit more peace. And then to something like, I'm actually enjoying being in a group of people. And this is like so meaningful, so different from everything I've known my whole entire life. Uh, so it just also kept, you know, in evolving, evolving, evolving in a, in a sort of like very interesting way, almost like it was its own thing. You know, mm -hmm. here I was kind of like walking along the path, but my path also somehow, you know, had a life of its own. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a you know the the idea of the vision being sort of um, 
evolving or or getting more mm-hmm. clear uh yeah. is is very important um because sometimes you know maybe in the beginning it was a little bit fuzzy or the there it was clear up to a point but then as you you know get more experience you start to think okay um i need to adjust the the lens that i'm seeing yeah <laughs> you adjust your optics yeah, yeah the optics yeah. and get and get clarity um, yeah yeah so what about you have your vision evolved somehow since you started the journey yeah i i think it it uh, definitely has um uh, the the I, I i think i i was going in um you know thinking okay i'm gonna just do coaching full time and that's gonna be my main focus and um and then yeah after a while i think coaching became to me more of a skill set than than just a profession even though it's still i'm i'm, I'm still con- i consider myself a coach as as a as a professional coach but at the same time i can use these coaching skills in different contexts it's not just one on one uh it could be uh a group or a team uh coaching uh it could be in helping um you know, um, sort of like a a learning um, or development of of in an organization, or uh, sort of you know putting together an experiential you know program that will help you know people see um, things that they may not realize uh, before, and and so that's that's sort of the this evolution. I I, I but I I started sort of like the team coaching. And that was my focus. And then when I went to Coactive, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do more one-on-one coaching and leadership, and and that will be my my main thing. But then I realized that you know I I really want to um, be able to to use the coaching skills in different scenarios, not just the one-on-one. Even though I still enjoy that one-on-one because you see that sort of transformation happening much more. Um, closely than than if you're just working with uh, a group of people or um, you know group that you may not to, you may not get to see um, you know more than once or a few times. Uh, so so yeah, it has evolved and it and like you said, it continues to evolve to find you know what's the 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 right balance um, and how do I want to you know what sort of like fills me up and and help me to continue to look up you know just um look forward to to doing this on a regular basis um because again coaching and and that's something a topic that we um that we explored last time uh, uh, this idea of emotional labor coaching even though it's exciting and it's really something that i feel um you know, I, I, I enjoy doing, uh, you, so you get to a point where, you know, there's a lot of emotional labor, uh, involved that you need to find ways to sort of like restore and, and recover. Um, and, and that also takes time. Um, so, so maybe that would be our next, <laughs> uh focus here in this conversation that like that how how do we recharge as coaches like what what do you do to recover restore and and continue to uh be present yeah well i have yeah a couple of couple of things that uh that are popping into my head right now is one of them is um that rest is 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 essential, absolutely essential. And that coach is not coaches for for a human being. Rest is essential, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, and it's not like it's not like a self care. It's it's like it's it's like water. It's like sleep. Rest is absolutely essential. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um. I I don't I it kind of like you asked the question how do coaches how do we as coaches recharge and I just want to kind of like turn it into like well how do we as, as humans people, right like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it it because it, uh, it's it's rest is so so essential and um 
and it takes, uh, I think we all know how, we all know what is, but it is, a lot of it is about, you know, feeling guilty or about, you know, other things, uh, they're like taking precedence, because I think in a way, rest is not easy. It feels like you're not doing anything or whatever it is, but it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> It is probably maybe one of the most important and one of the hardest things that in, in our modern culture we we learn mm. to do. Um, and I I am uh, I'm glad that I'm finding little pockets of, of that. And I, I started with completely redoing my schedule, realizing that I'm just not very effective after approximately 3 p.m. every day. I'm just, I don't know. There's like my biological clock. I'm I'm not sharp. I'm not, you know, by, by the way, we have 10 minutes before I turn into a pumpkin. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're approaching the three o'clock right mark. So I got to, yeah. <laughs> I got to, you know, uh, finish up here. Uh, well, maybe it's already starting. So, uh, and, and I just, you know, I decided that I will end my days. I do not do any coaching work after 3 p.m. Um, I can do other work, you know, admin work, maybe some reading, maybe some learning, but no coaching work. Uh, so that was an important aspect of how I just decided to, you know, take take responsibility for how I show up with my clients and not try to push it, not try to, to ignore it. Because what you said, you know, presence is, is, is so important, how how we are in any, you know, coaching uh, conversation and I once heard it, it, it was said in relationship to uh, to therapy, but I think it also works with coaching that in, in therapy, it's not like the modality or a tool or an instrument that's healing. It's mm. the relationship that's healing. Mm. And I think in a similar way, it, it works with with a coach, because even in, in our in coactive, there was this, you know, the relationship triangle, right? It's the relationship that a coach and, and a client could create that's actually healing and supporting um, the client. So um, from from that perspective, I'm not so much even taking care of the, the, the client, you know, in, in my work, I am taking care of the relationship. That is my responsibility. And I want to make sure that I am, you know, 100% available for that, uh, for that experience. Yeah. So um, I am lucky 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 that i made a very difficult decision to move out of new york city to uh, a very rural um you know country countryside and in upstate new york so um being surrounded by nature actually having a garden that i started um being able to just go out there for walks with my dogs has been a huge part of mm. just recharging and um uh, you know uh, how I can't even tell you how often I go into the into the woods with like a, a client sort of like conversation still in my head mm. and I kind of like replay it and I sift through it and it's you know sometimes kind of like something interesting emerges that I can then you know send like a follow-up email to to my client like hey so this kind of like emerged for me as I was thinking about you or thinking mm. about uh, so th those things have also been very healing for me because I don't sort of like carry it around you know, in a way, I just like nature helps me process things and I let it go. And, like that's sort of like um, um, and watercolors. Yeah. I started started drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think I mean, the, the idea of uh, restoring or uh, resting or recovery is basic is, is a, you know, something that we as humans do, not just people who work in the coaching profession. Um and it's it's very hard. I think these days, I I, I it's almost um, a, a theme, a, a recurring theme in 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 my coaching. Sometimes um, is this idea of like burnout. You know, sort of like uh, you know, people feel like they are constantly have to be on. There is yeah. no time for downtime, and uh, um, it is definitely not easy in today's um, age with the or society with all the like sort of the distractions and social media and all these things uh, because yeah browsing your facebook feed or twitter feed is not resting <laughs> no, no. i don't know no. if people uh know that but yeah I, I i think that's winding down requires you know things like you said you know just go out for a walk um 
nature um you know take a, a just a, sort of a um you know a, a pause from from anything um and and even then like you said you know you can still see that your processing thing your mind is still at work it's not taking a break um yeah so yeah well you know it's when we couple it with something that we do physical i think because mm -hmm. you know most of the time this is why i love using you know embodiment in my coaching i love it you know like just to get up and to <laughs> you know move around it is so restorative for me too you know if, if i you know have sessions where i just forget about it, and then sometimes we forget that we have access to such tools too yeah. you know and you just like sit all day long i just oh, just most of the time feel so much more depleted when i have a mm -hmm. you know sessions where i'm actually either coaching standing up or moving around um so I, I think just doing something, the, the brain will keep on doing what it's what it's doing. I think it's impossible to just try to control and stop the thinking or whatever it is. Let it let it do what it what it's best at, you know, which is mm. you know thinking, synthesizing, connecting the dots, and it's I, I love my brain for that. Thank you, <laughs> but. Um, but but I also know that I it it just it's it's useless if I try to meditate when I'm you know or when I'm just like gonna just sit there and watch the clouds it does not work. So I need to physically get myself mm. moving. Either it could be through dance or it could be like gardening. Definitely gets my hands working. Um, you know, walking through the woods, you always have to like watch where you're going. There is movement. So that's I, I feel like anything that helps connect you know uh the, to to the bodies is restorative mm -hmm. um you know for, for those for, well for those people who who find it restorative i mean for me so. yeah. <laughs> yeah no i i i have the same like my my um you know rest and and sort of recovery recharge come from exercise or sort of like motion um but yeah, if you're, you know, especially now when we are sitting in front of a, you know, a, a screen for for a long time on Zoom or on um, on uh, you know just uh, any type of any platform where you just video conferencing can be very de depleting. Um, and I think we talked about that in the conversation. I don't know if we have time to address it, but yeah, the, the coaching comes in different flavors. Some, some, it, it used to be, uh, in, in, I, from what I hear, and I have done some of the sessions by phone. So that, mm -hmm. that's a different channel. You got just to hear audio. Um, and then, uh, it, obviously face to face in person, people, you, you know, meet and, and coach uh, and, and have this coaching relationship. And then there's now video conferencing or Zoom and other platforms. Um, and every one of those has its pros and cons. <laughs> but video seems to be, uh, for me, at least the most depleting because I'm just like, you know, there's too many stimulations. You're, yeah. you're yeah. looking at, at the video at the screen and you're uh, trying to watch for cues and also at the same time you're not seeing like you're only seeing like you know just one <laughs> half of the body mm -hmm. so you're not really seeing so embodiment becomes very uh, important or essential to just get up and and do things that will give you different perspective and um, different ways to look at things um, which in the coaching uh, we, we refer to as geography like you know you change locations and 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 you know, um, look at things from different uh, places. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a, even something I'm just also thinking through uh, from uh, from the perspective of uh, of clients. How often, um, um, you know, people d don't even they're so used to this little square. Right. So even in a coaching conversation, they're, you know, trying to, pro you know, in a way, solve the problem in the box. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's kind of it's kind of interesting how sometimes even just like, hey, don't worry about like looking at me or me seeing you like, don't worry about this little square. Just get up, move around. And 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 that like that freedom, they kind of like untether themselves through, <laughs> this, you know, that little square. Yeah. Uh, on the on the screen, that shift alone, sort of like, 
changing where they look at, not me. They don't feel like they need to look at me, their coach, as they are thinking or trying to solve a challenge or problem. That alone sometimes is so valuable. Mm-hmm. I And I love when this when this happens, you know, all of a sudden they go look out of the window and they're like, ha, huh, now that I think about this, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it is yeah. so marvelous, yeah. you know, how just that tiny shift like that, because we're just kind of like so conditioning ourselves to like be here, you know, here is a, here is your box, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and there's also this kind of like constantly well, if you've got your self view on, and most people do, so there's like that's just not natural, um, you know, to to also constantly be looking at yourself and and, and seeing yourself. That that self awareness is kind of weird. So mm-hmm. I think it's just taxing taxing for the brain all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also uh, I, I played a little bit with this, um, uh, just just with. Um, uh, even sometimes just saying like, hey, what if you like you know, let's, let's, let's try this. How do you, what, what, as, as a client, like, would you feel better if you like, you know, turn like three quarters away from me and look this way? How is that for you? You know, or try like turning away from me. And sometimes it's kind of interesting how you're like, Oh, actually, you know, this feels, this feels better, you know, turning mm-hmm. was like, okay, so let's try and talk, you know, just you stay there. Let's try and talk, uh, you know, from that place. Or I might try and shift my body position real in relationship to to the screen. Uh it's it's kind of amazing how that alone can also just create a little like a sense of like, space, something different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's shifted that usefully. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was uh I, I mentioned last time that uh uh co- I, I welcome some coaching on audio or on the phone. Um, you know, every once in a while, because it's, mm-hmm. you know, it provides a different sort of presence. Um, you know, you're relying on just a lot of other senses than, you know, your your focus and being present on the words, on the tone of voice, on maybe pauses. Um, but for the video, it's definitely um feeling like you're stuck in this box and 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 this could be used uh, uh, literally and metaphorically yeah of yeah getting stuck in the box well can i just tell you a very short story <laughs> it, it, uh with i had a i worked with a client um and you know how we have like these virtual backgrounds mm-hmm. so i i never use a virtual background but this particular uh client had a virtual background of um the client worked at a, a some car company so a virtual background that had like, um, uh, you know, like a, a, a driver's seat and it was like a sports car. And I was just like, kind of like first couple of sessions, I, I was just very mesmerized at how fast the client was going. Intense, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and constantly the big challenge was time management, prioritization, too many things, overwhelm, kind of like I was just like, what is going on? And I just it was kind of just something. Was, yeah. you know. And then I think on the third session, and, it, and, and, you know, I just made a suggestion, bold suggestion. I said, do you have any other virtual backgrounds? Just like, OK. So the client changed it to, you know, that that kind of like the the beach Waterfall. beachy vibe with like a palm and a, I kid you not, within the first five minutes, there was a shift in the client's way of talking, way of mm. being. Mm. And uh, and the client actually shared with me that um they decided to change it for like for the for the for the rest of their um you know like they just just it just stayed there for the rest of the day they decided not Mm -hmm. to change it and then never even recognized that it was somehow actually feeding into that anxiety and constant like gotta 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 do more things faster things um it 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 was it was really wonderful yeah yeah i have a, a similar story i used to have like when the begin in the beginning of the pandemic i wanted to paint my room my office uh and in and the uh, you know at, at the house and i i like the color orange and i mm-hmm. i you know unfortunately i painted my room orange <laughs> and it was like in, insane like the color is just gonna make me crazy <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, you know, a few months later, I decided to get a professional person to paint it. 
and it was more like light blue and it was much calmer, much more relaxing. And I, I could focus a little bit better. So yeah, these things, um, you know, make, uh, they make a, a lot of difference. Um, you know, you remember the exercise with the co-actor where you, you, you walk fast and then you slow down yeah. and you walk at a different pace and, you know, your thoughts start to slow down as well, because I think that's just, you know, you, if you go for a walk, I, I do most of my thinking on my walks, but if I'm mm -hmm. jogging or running, it's hard to think when you're running. <laughs> it's not. Oh, easy. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it, it is, uh, it is something to, uh, to, you know, to consider, think about where your environment, you know, the stimulation and the, and sort of this pace you know, what's driving that pace? And it could be external, but also the environment has a big, uh, plays a big role in that. Um, so I know uh, we're we're coming to the, the end here, but uh, a couple of things I want to, um, you know, explore before we wrap up, uh, and maybe you can do it quickly. Uh, the, you know, one of the things that about the, the, the do coaches, do do people notice how like the in the coaching journey how they notice that things are changing or they're sort of gradually you know uh getting clarity or moving forward um do you do you notice these things or do you you know um get like clients to share some of these things with you um, what clients, how, how do I know that the clients are getting clear or how do clients yeah. know that they're getting clear? Yeah. How do you, you know that the client is getting clear? Um, and, and, and if they just, there is something happening as part of the coaching. Hmm. That's a good question. And, um, like the first place where I go is like, why would I want to know that? Uh, like I'm trying to find. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and maybe, maybe. Is Maybe, maybe, maybe it's for the client more than, than for, for you as the coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the client, if this is part of the contract where the client actually, you know, wants me to check in with them, like, are they getting, are they getting clarity? Mm -hmm. um, oh, then yes. Uh, but, but most of the time it is just, you know, it's, it's asking where are you now compared to where mm -hmm. you were? at the beginning of our engagement or at the beginning of your session, what's become clear? What do you now know that you didn't, didn't know back then? And, uh, um, and, and you know what, and I actually love it when the client says, no, I'm still as vague or fuzzy or, you know, ambiguous and, Oh, great. So what does that tell you about the journey that we've had, you know, the conversation we've had today? Mm -hmm. what, what what did we miss you know or what what were we maybe now know mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we could just turn our reflection towards the process that we use to help them get clarity versus just whether we got clarity or not mm -hmm. uh, so that's been also helpful because ultimately like my 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 goal as, as a coach is to like I don't want to coach people for the rest of their lives absolutely mm -hmm. not you know I I can't Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I want an end goal, you know. Um, I, I I want my clients to have an ability so that they understand how they think, how they, you know, um, make decisions, so that they actually use this ex experience, the coaching experience, um, to learn about themselves. Uh, it, and and then they can use those same maybe tools or ways of thinking on their own. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that's, um, you know, these are good signals to notice, you know, if they're like checking in with themselves, that's, that's a big one. Um, especially if they're still coming up with to the session, like I notice when, when, when the client is coming up with coming to the session with the same thing over and over and over again. So that could, you know, that, that tells me that, you know, there's something <clears throat> missing or they're, they're stuck still, um, Sometimes I don't know, you know, uh, if you use sort of like um, tools or assessments to sort of like, you know, see where they are in the journey. But yeah, there are some tools like I use sometimes the leadership circle stuff. Um, and uh, 
Um, I recently started to look at this uh, thing called Personality U uh, that was developed by Adam Grant, I believe. So there are some things out there that can just highlight some of the things and, and bring more awareness. Um, but definitely the, you know, having them check in with themselves and, you know, um, reporting the, or at least, you know, sensing that, okay, I'm, I'm still not clear, or I haven't, you know, taken action on, <laughs> on many of the things that I wanted to take action on. So yeah, what, and, and so that great question is you, you, you ask like, what, what does that tell you? Like, you know, it's, maybe it's not important. Maybe it's not a priority. Maybe you don't have time or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It is. Remember it's like, what story are you making up about this? Right. You know, right. And, and what's useful about this, this story for like where you are, who you are, how you want, you know, how you, how you seeing yourself. Uh, so the, I think that those could be very um, useful, sort of like useful conversations. It, it does not, mean that we we can't move forward it does not mean that you know we need to abandon the original goal but i think it's necessary for the client to just be like whoa okay <laughs> yeah um so yeah i'm making up that and 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 some i i, I love using this phrase i'm making up blah blah mm. blah or mm. you know i i make it to mean blah 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 um, because in a way it gives us, it gives us an out. And, and that's the thing with like some assessments where they tell you like you are X and that's it. And you kind of like decide to live your life with that story stuck in your, well, I am X, therefore I cannot be Y mm -hmm. uh, or Y or how many, or like how often I hear people say like, oh, that's just not me. And, you know, like yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't do things like that. And okay. Well, we all have a range. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so how how far do you want to explore that range? Because every person is like we have this keyboard in front of us and we're only mm -hmm. playing the first couple, like just a few notes right in front of us. We mm -hmm. all have access to this great range within us. And I, I just really love when even in a coaching conversation, someone sort of like steps a little bit, you know, plays a different note for themselves. Um, and we always have the option of coming back. And then I love that sort of like, let's just see an option and you can always come back. You can always come back to your sort of like square X or you like, yeah. um, you know, we're not taking that away from you. So I, I think there's kind of like very, it's, uh, I love and I hate assessments. <laughs> yeah. And I love assessments that actually allow us to explore more options rather than shut us down and say like, you are that. Yes. Um, and and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a great point because, yeah, it, it's the assessment could be that the person think, OK, I can't do this because the assessment says so. The assessment says uh, so. so. Uh, yeah, said so. 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 Uh, so, yeah, it, it is it could be um, sort of a, um, a detriment in some ways if they tell that story to themselves like oh i i can't do that because um you know assessment says, says i'm an introvert or something i you know i can say you know i can't do uh public speaking because i'm i am just you know i can't i i have this sort of um you know introversion that i or or shyness maybe uh, that is so sad. Yeah. Is, that would be, so, uh, so one of the front of the room leaders, Eric Koner, he call he he likes to call them not assessments, but excess meant. <laughs> so it's like we get excess, yeah. but you know, to like that. like a part, you know, just knowing something about ourselves, but that's not the definition of the box. It just gives mm -hmm. us a like a key and helps us open maybe one door, but we have so many doors to open. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, um, you know, framing of the <laughs> assessments. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of the uh, articles I've I've seen about like some of the assessment from the past, like you know Myers Briggs and others. You know, it sort of like you know maybe limiting in 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 some ways. Uh, so um, so yeah, when using these assessments there has to be some sort of exploration not just you know um limitation <laughs> so uh so yeah keeping that in mind can help open that range that you talked about earlier you know not get stuck in that box 
Yeah. Well, well and, and also in coaching, oftentimes we do also focus on the behavior, right? Not so much the personality part. Like it, it helps for us to, to know, okay, for some maybe aspects of personality, mm-hmm. but ultimately mm-hmm. we we want to, you know, develop uh, different behaviors, you know, a range of behaviors, more effective be- be- behaviors. Uh, um, so, uh, and, and this is where I, you know, in, in coaching, we have like all, all the other tools, like embodiment is part of like trying something mm-hmm. else, actually maybe trying a new behavior or how we're going to, you know, stand when we're doing uh, this, this presentation, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, uh, uh, you know, things like role play. I love doing role plays yeah. in, in coaching, uh, as, yeah, as it's, it's one of my like favorite, uh, not favorite, but, uh, it, it, it is, I know that it's a very effective tool, uh, and it gets me to stand up off of that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Role play is another good, uh, um, tool or, or technique to use and, and just sort of, um, play, you know, play through something that the client is, is sort of like, you know, is stuck with and, and, and they want to just think through it. It is not easy to just think through something by just thinking about it. You have to talk mm-hmm. through it. That's, you know, that's something I, I'm, I'm sure um, many people realize, but sometimes the client think that they're going to think their way out of something without talking through it. it. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you heard the phrase, <laughs> Well, now that I'm talking about this, it's like, yeah. <laughs> aha, now it makes yeah. sense. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, I could I could continue this conversation with all all day, but I know yeah. we have a uh, time. Uh, so, what 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 would you like to leave us with, or or something that you want to share before we uh, end the the conversation? Ah, uh, okay. Um, I well, the first thing that just grabbed my attention is you asked this question. I have this photo on my desk. It's a photo of me. I must have been maybe like five years old. And it's a photo, it's a black and white photo of me. I have um, a um, a brush in my hand. And actually, I'm holding it in my mouth for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and the what it represents for me is this idea of creativity and play mm-hmm. and how much of it is always available to us. Um, and oftentimes, like when we talk about, we, we talked a little bit about this emotional labor aspect of the coaching profession of how we oftentimes make up stories about how we're supposed to show up as coaches, or maybe we've seen someone coach in a certain way and be like, oh, I want to be like that coach, or I want to be like, you know, sort of like we make those things up and we lose our like access to who we really, really are. Mm-hmm. And like on this very, very, you know, fundamental pure level so this actual photo really reminds me of what mm. when i was you know pure and innocent yeah. what was important to me what is what was something that i couldn't get enough of and that was this creativity mm. and um so Boy. something yeah just not yeah just not uh, let's not forget who we were because i think who yeah. we are is how we coach mm-hmm. yeah. and it's best to coach from those pure creative open curious um child like places yeah i love that um yeah i think i mean i, I everyone has that five-year-old in them somewhere <laughs> yes, and they need to find yes. them and find that person <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I I think that's a great place to uh, to wrap up here. The idea of just uh, creativity and play, and that's really what coaching, um, you know, part of coaching is is sort of that you know bringing that creativity and play that maybe the client has sort of ignored that voice for for so long, and now it's hard to to hear it anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's ultimately coaching is a methodology to help us learn. And as kids, how do we learn? We learn from play. Mm -hmm. So why not, you know, continue learning through play? And it could be very serious play. It could be, it doesn't mean it's, you know, silly. It could be silly. I love silly. (laughs) Silly and serious. (laughs) Yeah, silly and serious play. 
Yeah. So um, that could be another episode uh, with uh, with you, and next time maybe uh, uh. <laughs> coaching with play. So uh, I'll yeah. bring my red nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Katya, I appreciate your time. Uh, really great to uh, connect and catch up with you and uh, hear all the insights that you have. Uh, and look forward to uh, having you again sometime soon. Absolutely. Sala, thank you so much for this opportunity to chat with you. I, I Again, I just feel so energized. Uh, just wonderful. Um, and thank you that you're doing this wonderful uh, podcast. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh,